I want to say a special, special, special good day. Hi, Trisha. Good morning, JL. Oh, good evening. Sorry. It's, it's morning. morning. <laughs> it's morning for me. It's 6.10 a.m. Monday morning. How are you doing today? I am, I am doing okay in, you know, in spite of the situation, I am doing fine. I have been doing fine. Wow. Okay. First of all, Chicha, tell me, where are you located right now? I am located in um, Wuhan, China, which is in Hubei province. Uh, uh -huh. My district is Chaoko district. So I came to China last year, August, to continue my medical studies and specialize in general surgery. So this is my current location, Wuhan, China. Okay. And um, tell me a little bit about when you found out everything that you call the new norm because you've been to china before so this was not a, a new place for you but what how did you feel when you first heard that there was an outbreak and that you were in the heat of it at first um there was a disbelief in actuality because we couldn't understand how you know life could have changed in such how many how, how do i say it days life could have changed in seconds life could have changed so much in hours um initially i first we first heard about it about the 19th 20th the 23rd as you know there were a lot of rumors or a lot of you know like some people saying here and there that this might be an issue but it wasn't taken you know it wasn't like the draconian measures had not been instituted until the 23rd of january when the entire city only in a few, were given only a few hours to do whatever you had to do if you had to get out find a way to get out do whatever you had to do possible and we were only at 10 a.m the city went into lockdown lockdown meaning that airport air travel suspended public transportation suspended um anything no one was allowed at first to get out of the city the residents or people who lived in wuhan were allowed to return that was only initially but now everything is you know has been suspended so people can't leave and people can't come in as of now so things are slowly getting back you know slowly meaning essential workers are now allowed out but we are still under major lockdown wow wow so you have been in isolation for how many months now um i really stopped counting but yesterday someone reminded me that it was about 61 to 60 days that 60 days there about months maybe two months and a little bit there about since i've been in isolation explain to us what isolation is because some of us might be saying isolation or she just in and out she just in and out yeah explain so, what uh, isolation means um isolation okay my dear so the first two weeks from the 23rd um we were allowed to you know you can go to the supermarkets you can do your grocery shoppings taken into consideration that you perform the necessary precautions. You get to the supermarket, you use your disinfecting wipes, you wipe down the handle of the trolleys, etc. This was allowed initially for the first two months. Now, when they noticed that the rate of infection was instead climbing, they actually shut down everything. So the only places opened were pharmacies, pharmacies and certain supermarkets only. So you had to possibly have a permission sleep, only a few people to go out and it was only once a week. For me at my university, they shut the doors so we could not get out. This was their way of protecting us. So we have been confined to our dorms from two weeks after the 23rd. So they provide meals for us, two meals a day. If you need anything, you have to ask their permission. You have to they will source it for you, but they do not want you to put yourself at risk. They would like to limit the amount of infection and that was their way of dealing with the situation. The measures were a bit, for some people, they, it was, a, you know, it was mentally tasking, 
we can say it was harsh, but this is what worked in my opinion. Everybody stayed inside, stayed confined to their, you know, their apartments. You had to have permission. And you know, this system might look different for China because we know the system under which China operates as opposed to, you know, countries where people feel that they are, they have the right to do, you know, as they should. So it's a little bit more difficult. Yes, it's a bit more difficult to deal, you know, especially in the West with these measures than the people, than us being here. So you've been on lockdown, so to speak. Um, now we're hearing that in China or in Wuhan right now, they just shut down the last hospital that was used to treat um, patients of, of the coronavirus because they've seen a, um, a considerably uh, amount of cases where people are no longer getting sick and people are, are able to, to go home. And what exactly is the situation right now? The situation, I can only speak for what I know. They have indeed um, locked down the makeshift hospitals. These were the, the two hospitals that they constructed to treat the patients. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, possibly there are still, you know, patients with other patients who do not, the amount of patients sick now do not require that many beds or admissions. So things are slowly getting back, slowly getting back to normal. But for me, um, it's a sign of hope in Wuhan. It makes us feel that this ordeal will soon be over. We're all, you know, usually hoping that, okay, everything is shut down. The, they're for the past few days, there have been no infected cases or reports of infected cases. The um, number of infected patients, as we can see, it has been decreasing significantly. Um, as of today, I have not checked the stats. You know, they provide the daily stats for how many patients have been recovered, how many are still sick, how many are still in critical condition. I have not gone through that. However, for me, for us, they still, you know, being cautious they still do not want us to go outside so we are still confined to our rooms and to our dorms so if you do not have any business outside they will not allow you out still but indeed the numbers are decreasing Dr. Lewis how do you feel um many times really and truly cabin fever is a real phenomenon <laughs> I feel you know that if I could have gone through this and survived that a lot of people can do it. I feel hopeful that the virus at first, it made us feel that it was here to take over, to destroy. But now I feel that with all the steps we're taking, that this is something we can beat. I am at present optimistic. This is how I feel now. Let's not talk about the past few weeks. <laughs> Did you ever feel abandoned? I did. I did. Not abandoned that, you know, they put us in a room and they don't want us to come up, but abandoned that I'm the only one in my room. Abandoned that I am away from my loved ones. I am away from my family, away from my friends. Although they have been doing a very good job, an exceptional job in, you know, keeping me, you know, motivated. Um, encouraging me, but you at this times you do feel abandoned. To be honest, I did. What what um, what recommendations would you give, or or from your professional as well as personal standpoint, what sort of recommendations you give to other countries? Like you just heard, your home country has the first case or the first confirmed case, right? So, what sort of advice would you give to people in the or in the rest of the world who have not had as severe as Wuhan, um, but there's a chance that it might spread and it might infect a lot more than we anticipate. That's what I want to ask you. The advice, the first advice I would give is that they should try and they should comply to social isolation. This is the only way that we're going to fight this disease. My opinion is that if you do not have any reason to be out, 
if your job is something you can do from home, if you do not have to interact with other people, especially the elderly, especially the patients or the sick people who are immunocompromised, it would be best at this time to refrain from any possible contact. I would also advise that all Friday nights, you know, we'll enjoy our Friday night limes, as we say it in, you know, colloquial terms. Mm -hmm. I would advise that as of present that all of these social activities be put on hold. If you do not have a need to have more than 10 people in a space at once, I advise that we do not do it. I will secondly advise that we continue, as we have heard, to proper, to, to, um, you know, practice proper hand and respiratory hygiene. This is essentially important because this is the medium or the way through which the virus spreads. It comes from your hand, it can go through, through you put your hand on your face, you know, it spreads through that manner. Thirdly, please listen to the authorities. If you have been placed on self quarantine, please take the entire population into consideration and stay at home. Self quarantine. This is this is very important. You came from the United Kingdom. You came from the United States. You do not. You should not be, you know, interacting with the general population. You should be at home. If you exhibit symptoms, please do not hesitate to inform the Ministry of Health so that they can, you know, go into the practice of contact tracing. You can get tested, and this the, the for me. This virus can be dealt with if it is dealt with in an effective manner, in an effective time, we can get back to, you know, normal life as we know it in as, you know, quick time as possible.